from spatial and temporal separable solutions to spatial separable solutions in spherical coordinates, by the end of this video, you will be able to understand what spherical harmonics are and how to find them given a particular level. Let's recall that we had the wave function that we split from just the position and the temporal sp parts in chapter one and two. Now we go further now that we're in three dimensions and split this spatial part into a radial equation and an angular equation. And what we're going to deal with today is this angular equation. What we want to do is use equations 4.27, 4.28, and 4.32 to construct the angular equation for 0, 0, and 1, 2. These have a special name which we'll talk about very soon. Check that they are normalized and orthogonal. Cool. So equation 4.27 as indicated by blue is paired with this blue equation here for some level M and level L. What this equation refers to is the associated Legendre function, which is of the form of a polynomial generating function where we have all this stuff and P sub L and this P sub L is the green function here, which is known as the Lth Legendre polynomial defined by the Rodriguez formula. That was covered in chapter two, I believe. Um, sometimes these two things are clumped together. And in fact, many authors use these compiled where you just have a derivative of M plus L and this factor out here goes up front. So whatever one you prefer, free, feel free to use. The purple though, this is the special one that we're going to focus on for some level M and some level L. We have the theta and the phi arguments here, so that tells us that we split this up into a phi part and a theta part. What this tells us is that with this square root here, we are normalized. And so what we say is that the normalized angular wave function is known as the spherical harmonics. And this is used everywhere in a the theory moving forward, especially for central potentials. Think about atoms. So before we dive in, don't forget that there is a complimentary PDF attached to the attached in the description for some of the nitpicky math that isn't in the video. Further, if you could please like and subscribe, this will help support the channel and keep these videos coming. All right, so to start off, we have case one here where we were asked to find the angular function for zero zero. And the top indice means that we want m equals zero, and the bottom subscript means that we want l equals zero. So if we plug this into the Legendre polynomial function via Rodriguez formula, we see that p of zero of x is equal to one over two to the zero power times zero factorial and the zero derivative. Uh, and then this function here goes to the zeroth power. So one, 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 a whole bunch of ones, they all equal one. Not too bad. If we plug this P zero of X into the associated function, the blue function, we see that we get a whole bunch of zero powers again, which, you know, what this turns to one, this turns to one, and this turns to one, all multiplied by one. Well, of course we get one back, no big deal. So, if we're trying to now put these terms together in the spherical harmonic, again, be aware of the indices and what they mean. Subscript L, superscript M, color code it for a reason. You plug your zero in here, zero minus zero, zero factorial, zero plus zero, zero factorial, both equal one, so they cancel, no big deal. E to the I times M, which is zero times phi, well, that's e to the zero, which is one. Again, we can get rid of that. No biggie. That's not too bad. And we'll see how this tidies up soon. So now with that all plugged in, what we notice is that the square root term, the factorials cancel and we're left with a one over four pi in the square root. Wonderful. That exponential is e to the zero goes to one, which we have here. Wonderful. And that p of x for a zero zero is equal to one. Note that it being defined in terms of P of X is not going to suffice for the angular equation. We have to evaluate this polynomial at X equals cosine theta, which is the original prescription. So be aware of that, that we have to plug in cosine now. Uh, this was covered extensively in the E and M book by Griffiths as well. When we were looking at solutions there, 
So these functions are everywhere. There's plenty of resource for them if you need help. Uh, but nonetheless, our first spherical harmonic is just a 1 over 4 pi, of course, in the square root, normalized. So then moving on, if we want to check and see whether it's normalized, this thing has to equal 1. So here, we are now integrating over the angles. So that would be everything from 0 to pi for the uh, polar angle and then 0 to 2 pi for the azimuthal angle phi. Uh, again, this was done extensively in e &M with Gaussian surfaces and all the integrals involved in that from the vector calculus. Nonetheless, what we see here is that when we take the magnitude squared of this, we just get a 1 over 4 pi, easy enough. Fubini's theorem allows us to split up these integrals by their colors, which is by their arguments, as you see here. This evaluates to 2. This evaluates to 2 pi. Again, we've seen this before in E&M, but if you'd like some more work, it's in the PDF. Nonetheless, we get 2 pi, or 2 times 2 pi, which is 4 pi over 4 pi, so yes, that equals 1, and we are normalized. Not too bad. Case 2 is going to be a little more involved. For here, we have m equals 1 for the case, and l equals 2, as indicated by the uh, super and subscripts. Um, but be aware that m can take different values depending on the value of l, which we'll see in due time. Wonderful, wonderful. Now that we know what our target is, let's go ahead and plug l equals 2 into this Legendre function. Uh, we see that we get 2 to the 2 now and a 2 factorial, and now we have to take two derivatives based on this power here. I think in, instead of using a chain rule, it's easier just to factor this slight, this one out and um, let's just foil it out, distribute it. When you get to higher levels of this, chain rule definitely takes its effects much quicker. So be aware that in this particular case, it's easier to foil it out. Not always, though. So here, simplify this down. 2 to the 2 gives us 4. 2 factorial is 2 times 1. So we get a 2 there. We have to take two derivatives of the fact or the distributed form, which is a 4 3 polynomial as expected. Take one derivative, use the power rule. This fraction out here goes to 1 over 8. So take one derivative, take another derivative. We see that the 12x squared minus 4 gives us a common factor of 4, so we factor it out, leaving us with 3x squared minus 1. This simplifies down to 1 half, as we see here. And this form should look familiar. As we recall from E and M, this was the P of 2, except now with cosine that we're going to have to evaluate later. So all these things are coming back to us now. If we want the associated Legendre function, we have to now evaluate it for the case of M equals 1, which is in red. So here we have a negative sign to the 1. We have a 1 minus square root or 1 minus X squared to the 1 at power, which will go to a square root. And here we only have to evaluate one derivative of the P of 2. So let's see how that's done. All right, not too bad as you might imagine. We just simplify down. Negative 1 to the 1 gives us negative 1. Of course, we just have a 1 half power here. We substitute in that uh, P, of L, oh yeah, P of 2, the polynomial for uh, the level 2. We see that we could switch the 1 half and that DX. That's just cleaning it up. This goes to a square root, makes it nice and easy. Negative, of course. So now we could take the derivative of 3x squared, which leads to 6x. Pretty easy. Um, 6x and 1 half simplify down to a 3. So that's where we get the negative 3x square root 1 minus x squared. Okay, now that all that glorious work is done, let's go back to our goal now into finding the spherical, spherical harmonics. Wow. Okay, so... Again, let's recall that color coding the levels for their uh, meanings. Blue is M, or yeah, M is blue, which is 1. L is green, which is 2. And we can now substitute them in accordingly. So now E to the I, M phi goes to 1. We like that. This was what we just found. All this stuff, you need to be careful simplifying it down. 2 times 2 gives us 4. 2 minus 1 gives us 1. And 2 plus 1 gives us 3. These factorials will come in and out of existence, so just be aware how we can simplify them down and what their definitions are. All right, moving forward, we now can plug in this associated Legendre function. But again, these are of variables x, x here and x here, and we need to evaluate this for cosine 
because we need a theta and a phi in the spherical harmonic form. So let's go ahead and simplify this down. Wonderful, wonderful. So the three that we had on the outside from this bracket here from the polynomial, I put inside the square root so we can get all the numbers together and simplify. Note that by putting it inside the square root, I needed to square it. So in order to keep it algebraically equivalent. So that's why I have a nine here. And what we'll see is that this factor of nine cancels with the factor of three from the three factorial. And that we're left with two times one, which is two and four times two gives us the eight we see here. So that was a quick note there. The other note here is that this nine and three cancel to a factor of three, three times five gives us 15. That's where we find those numbers. Again, the bracket from the polynomial had to be evaluated at x equals uh, cosine theta in order to get the thetas in there. And what do we know about this wonderful 1 minus uh, cosine squared theta? We could use the uh, Pythagorean identity, which is 1 equals cosine squared plus sine squared theta. So we could sub in sine squared here and get sine out from the square root. Again, all the nitty gritty of that is in the PDF. Check it out if you'd like. Our next goal is to determine is this thing normalized, just like we did on the first one. Here our function is a little more complicated, so we can't just plug it constant in and move it through like we did last time. This magnitude squared means that we have to take the complex conjugate and multiply it by the function itself. And when doing so, we see that the e to the i, that is the only thing that has a complex number, so we have to multiply e to the negative i phi times e to the positive i phi, and we join the arguments via the exponential rules, and you see that that's where the zero comes from. Now that we have that done, we can go ahead and simplify this integral and see if we are normalized. So now that we're tidied up there, we see that that e to the zero goes to one. We could split up these integrals like we did last time. Thank you, Fubini. And we see that we have all the thetas here, all the phi's here, easy enough. What we can now do is go back to Pythagorean identity and get the sine squared in terms of cosine for a u sub out, as we'll see soon. This green integral goes to uh, 2 pi, since it's 2 pi minus 0, easy enough. That factor of 2 pi cancels with the factor of 2 pi from 8 pi here, as we see there. So simplify that down, no biggie. Here we're going to apply a u sub, which is easy enough. We're going to let u equal cosine theta and which uh, we get a du um, is equal to negative sine theta d theta so all that goes away we're able to switch the order due to the negative again check the pdf if you want that uh, what we can see here is that this is just now a polynomial uh, integral and we can handle it pretty quickly evaluating that leads to a 2 over 3 minus 2 fifths which naturally would lead to 4 over 15 which is enough to cancel that out. So yes, we are normalized. Pretty cool, pretty cool, we like that. The next big goal is to find out, are we orthogonal with these two functions? This is one of the big things that we need and we saw why we needed them in chapter two and explained why even further in chapter three, thanks to things like completeness, linear, linearity, combinations, all the fun stuff from the math side. So let's go ahead and check this. Again, be careful. In the notation that we have, we need to have a complex conjugate times the other wave function. And again, this is the integration factor that we have for switching to spherical. So we need to verify that this equals zero. Let's plug in and evaluate. That's what we see here. We need to now take the complex conjugate and then simplify. Further simplifying this down now, what we see is that we have a, a negative one over pi that came from joining the purple constants where we had a 15 over 8 pi negative and we multiplied it by a square root of 1 over 4 pi. So the 4 pi and 8 pi combined to 32 pi squared. So we were able to take a factor of pi out easy enough. Um, I don't know why my green integral didn't follow it, but with the complex conjugate, this e to the i phi is now a negative. So we've got to be careful there. And otherwise, we just have a similar integral setup, and we're able to split them into two components. The theta's on one, phi's on the other. And we see here that if we use a curious uh, u sub with sine, we see that sine evaluated at the bounds leads to a zero, zero integral. And we know that if I'm integrating from zero to zero, I have to be zero. 
Further, if we evaluate the green integral, what we see is that we just get uh, e to the negative i phi over negative i, again with the u sub if you'd like, but evaluating that between 2 pi and 0 using Euler's identity, that gives us a 1 minus 1. So in either case, we have a 0 from the blue and a 0 from the green, so we are 0 overall. That is pretty cool. So we did verify that this is orthogonal. These are checked out. And for the simple cases of uh, these two functions, we're able to descend how to formulate them and what, they, uh, what properties they have with respect to one another. So this is going to be a nice complete set of solutions that we will have to use. The next big hurdle is determining what the radial wave equation is and using that, which is going to be context specific, of course, due to the potential. So let's go see. Uh, now we can see what the graphs of these might look like and get a better understanding. Cool, cool. So what these graphs represent are the spherical harmonics, but they are probability plots, meaning that we have to take the magnitude squared. So here, since we know we're normalized, this just leads to a sphere of one. And that makes sense, spherical harmonics. We cover all angles, theta and phi. Okay, so these, this is representative of the level L equals zero and M equals zero. Fair enough. Here we have a little more complex one because we have L equals one and we can see what the values of M range through. And we have a couple different plots that uh, can be associated with that in different orientations. Here we have a pretty cool system for what L equals two. Note that we had L equal two and M equal one, which is going to look like this. Uh, the reference for this paper will be linked below because it's pretty cool. Uh, but here we could see that all of these other types of, uh, they look the same, these plots look the same, but they have a different orientation. So be aware, this is where like things like we talked about in the last question where degeneracy comes in. This is kind of where they come in, where M equals zero is kind of a nodal or zonal line. And we see that the zero case for the L equal three and M equal these values. The zero case is the only one that looks different. So those zero cases for M have a very particular property. So be aware of that. Other than that, you have the orientations that just keep switching. And we've seen these before. You may have encountered them in a chemistry class, but nonetheless, these are everywhere. So we will see more of them very soon. In summary, spherical harmonics are needed for central potential problems. And now you know how to find them for any given level which this will ultimately be determined by the principal quantum number n. See the chapter notes for how n, l, and m relate, because this will be important when we get to spin. Thank you for watching, and until next time, stay curious, happy learning.